Hi, welcome to our video on the Translate Two-Step Verbal Expressions into Algebraic Expressions um, Standard Assessment. Now this is a, a video that's going to cover how to do this and it applies, I think, to all different algebra classes. These are taken from the, the sixth grade test uh, that's given in New York. So here's how it works, right? Here we have a problem. Sarah collects stamps and keeps them in envelopes. She had nine envelopes with a certain number of stamps, S. So they'll always give us the variable, just like that. They'll say the, the, the thing the variable represents, here are the stamps, and then the letter that represents it, so S. So when you see S here, that's for stamps. So she had nine envelopes with a certain number of stamps, S, in each envelope. She sells three of the envelopes which expression represents the number of stamps left the number of stamps Sarah has left okay a bunch of choices here um, let's let's just think about this um, so so she has nine envelopes with a certain number of stamps so nine envelopes with a certain number of stamps and then we take away three envelopes which each contain um, the same number of stamps, right? We have to assume that, I guess. And and what do we have left? Well, we had nine envelopes with some amount of stamps and took three away with some amount of stamps. We have six envelopes with some amount of stamps. So I think the answer is H. But let's just, I mean, you, when you're dealing with problems like, like this, if you're feeling confused, plug in a number. So we can say, let S be two stamps right so if if it was the case that every envelope had two stamps let's see if our equation makes sense so we have nine envelopes each with two stamps that's, that's 18 stamps minus three times two right three envelopes with, with two stamps that should be the same as having six envelopes left with two stamps each so six times two is twelve and 18 minus 6 is 12, this works, right? If it, if it didn't work, let's, let's, let's try a different one. Let's try J. J says 9S minus S minus 3. So 9, nine envelopes with a certain number of stamps. Maybe if we, if we took away one envelope, 1S, one and then took 3 away of something, this would make sense. I think we'll see here that this doesn't really work. If S was 2, so we had 2 stamps, we have 9 times 2, minus 2, minus 3, which is 18 minus 2, that's, that's 16, minus 3 is 13 stamps. Let's think of that if that makes sense. If I have 9 envelopes and they each have 2 stamps, that's, that's 18 stamps. But then if I, if I take 2 envelopes away, right, that, that well, how many stamps should I lose? Well, if I take one envelope away, I should lose two stamps. Okay, so I should get 16, right? But, but if I'm taking uh, three envelopes away, right? Here I've taken one. I should be taking two more, two more envelopes away. And how many stamps are in each envelope? Well, we're saying that there are, are two stamps on every envelope. So that would be, that would mean we're taking away another four stamps. We're going to take away two more envelopes, right? So four more. So we should get 12. So this equation does not work. Now 9 plus 3s, that, that would make more sense if we were adding envelopes. Um, and here 9s minus 3. Again, if, if you had two stamps on each envelope, 9 times 2 is 18, minus 3 is 15. Does that make sense? Well, if, if, each, if each envelope has two stamps and we're taking three envelopes away, we should be taking six stamps away, not, not three, because every envelope would have two stamps. So H is the only answer that makes sense. And on a lot of these problems, we should go through and look at all the choices. So here, Gabe invited four girls and seven boys to a party. Each of Gabe's guests received a certain number of candy bars C. Which expression represents the total number of candy bars given to Gabe's guests? Okay, so at this party there are four girls and there are seven boys, right? And C is for candy bars. 
and each of Gabe's guests received a certain number of candy bars C. So how many guests are there? Well, there's four girls and, and seven boys, and they're all guests, so that's 11 guests. And we want to know how many candy bars were given out. Well, let's think about that. If, if everyone got two candy bars, then altogether we'd have two times the 11 guests, we'd have 22 candy bars. If, if everyone got one candy bar, we'd do one times 11 to say that we gave everyone one candy bar, which is 11 in total. If we had three candy bars per guest, it would be three times 11, or you know, three candy bars times 11 guests gives us 33 candy bars. So no matter how we're looking at this, we're taking the, the candy bar number times 11 people, which also equals 11 times C. We can change that order. It won't change the result. That's the commutative property, which is often written as just the number 11 and the variable C. So our choice A, 11C, makes sense. 28C would have made more sense if we had somehow multiplied four girls and seven boys to get 28. 4C plus 7, well, that might make sense if if the seven boys weren't getting, were only getting one candy bar each, and the four girls were perhaps getting some other number of candy bars. And then 4C times 7C would give us 28C squared. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how that would be, how that would apply to here. And uh, actually, the only answer that makes sense, I don't know why I X'd it out, is A. All right, 11C, that, that's the answer we found down here. Here, the number of restaurants on, on Bolin Street is 3 less than, tricky one right there, 3 less than 4 times the number of restaurants are on Macau Street. Which expression can be used to, to determine the number of restaurants on Bolin Street? So, so three less than something. Think about this: if you had five dollars and you took three, three less than that, that means you would subtract the three from the five because three less than five is is two, right? It's not just because you see three in the wording first and then less than. We're not subtracting, right? If you had three less than five, you wouldn't do three minus five. That would give you that would give you negative two, and that doesn't make sense in this context. So we could take the absolute value of this and, and say that either way is going to be two, whether positive or negative. But in general, we say three less than four times the number is three less than is almost written backwards in a sense. Four times some number of restaurants, and and there's our answer D. So four times the number of restaurants. 3 is less than that, and, and that will be used to determine the number of restaurants. Here I think they're hoping you either multiplied or added 4 and 3 in some way. And this this is the common one I think people get confused on, because you read 3 less than, so you think because you see 3 and then the subtraction sign, that, that that's the answer. But in fact, D is the one that makes sense here. Um, here, Pat threw a football 5 more than adding more than is a key phrase for, for addition five more than twice the number of yards y so two times the number of yards y that Gary threw so which expression can we use to find the, the number of yards pat through the football well 2y minus five, five would be five less than twice the yards that Gary can throw but here is what we got 5y minus 2, that, that would make sense if you could throw 2 yards less than 5 times the number of yards Gary could throw. And then j, again, 2 more than 5 times the number of yards that Gary can throw. But we but here we have g, which is uh, 5 more than twice the number of yards that Gary can throw. Um, and here's an, another one. Oops. Sorry. We'll do this one first. On Friday, Lewis saw a certain number of humming, hummingbirds each, so that, that's our variable again. On Saturday, he saw three more than twice the number of hummingbirds he saw on Friday. Write an expression for the number of hummingbirds. So we don't need an equation, we don't need an equal sign, just an expression. So H is our hummingbirds. And he saw three more than twice the number of hummingbirds that he saw on Friday. So three more than twice the number of hummingbirds. And that's that, believe it or not, is 
pretty much our approach to, to algebra in, in sixth grade right now. And, and we do transition over to this standard, which is really also a seventh grade standard. Um, so a lot of the samples for this we'll see in our next videos on, on verbal, verbal sentences um, or expressions. Um, here we have what algebraic equation represents three times the difference of a number x and 9 equals 15. So three times the difference of a number x and 9 equals 15. Because they're implying that the difference of a number in x right here is what's being multiplied by 3, right? It's three times this difference. So the difference takes precedent because you want to figure that out first and then multiply it by 3. And then we have equals 15. So there's our equation and we have it right here as D. So up next if you want to check out uh, the verbal expressions videos, um, it's, they call it verbal sentences here for 7th grade. But there's a whole series um, from 7th grade that are going to start being used in 6th grade. And this is just good practice uh, for any level of, of student trying to study this topic. Alright, hope that helped.